Alright guys, so once again, we gotta talk about woke activists basically trying to shut down people's free speech. And this time, we're talking about woke activists that are literally trying to shut down free speech at a free speech event by arguing that it is their free speech to shut down free speech. <laughs> yes, that is literally what is going on here. As Yale hosted a bipartisan event in which you had two speakers from opposite sides of the political spectrum come together to support free speech right and apparently that triggered some of the yale law students who showed up to protest uh this event and we're going to talk about it as this right here really shows you how far gone a lot of people on the left are and it is a very 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 disturbing sign in our country as people that go to these ivy league schools these law students uh their future ceos lawyers politicians like they're the people that are going to have prominent roles in our society. And if these people are our future leaders, then our country is simply doomed. And that's why I think these stories are worth covering. And this is happening quite a bit, right? A lot. It must be because it's springtime, right? That this is happening. But the left is really showing themselves to be who they really truly are. They are really the fascists in this country as they are trying to stifle any type of speech that they don't like. So this is going to be a pretty uh, long story. So let's go ahead and, and get into this. I don't waste you guys time and I want you guys to understand exactly what's going on here. More than 100 students at Yale Law School attempted to shout down a bipartisan panel on civil liberties, intimidating attendees, and causing so much chaos that police were eventually called to escort panelists out of the building. The March 10th panel, which was hosted by the Yale Federalist Society, featured Monica Miller of the Progressive American Humanist Association and Christian Wagner of the Alliance Defending Freedom, ADF, a conservative nonprofit that promotes religious liberty. Both groups had taken the same side in a 2021 Supreme Court case involving legal remedies for First Amendment violations. The purpose of the panel, a member of the Federalist Society said, was to illustrate that a liberal atheist and a conservative Christian could find common ground on free speech issues. Now, this specific case they're talking about involves a, a man uh, that wasn't allowed to prophesize on a public college uh, campus, okay? And uh, after he graduated, he ended up suing the school over a First Amendment violation, okay? I just want you guys to understand that two organizations from opposite ends of the political spectrum have come together to have a discussion on defending that guy's right to freedom of speech, okay? They both agree. And this is triggered leftists because they don't like the fact that the Alliance Defending Freedom uh, is there. Okay, they don't like the fact that a group that they don't agree with is there speaking and they see that as harmful to them. Okay, so let's read more here. Quote, it's pretty much the most innocuous thing you could talk about, he added. That didn't stop nearly 120 student protesters from crowding into the event. When a professor at the law school, Kate uh, Stith, began to introduce uh, Wagner, the protesters who outnumbered the uh, audience members rose in unison, holding signs that attacked ADF. The nonprofit has argued and won several Supreme Court cases establishing religious exemptions from civil rights law, most famously Masterpiece Cake Shop versus Colorado uh, Civil Rights Commission in 2018. As they stood up, the protesters began to antagonize members of the Federalist Society, forcing Stith to uh, pause her remarks, one protester told a member of the conservative group she would literally fight you, female dog, according to the audio and video contained by the Washington Free Beacon. With the fracas intensifying, Stith reminded the students of Yale's free speech policies, which bar any protest that interferes with speakers' ability to be heard and of community members to listen when the protesters heckle in her response. Several with uh, their middle fingers raised, she told them to quote unquote grow up according to video of the event obtained by the Free Beacon. So let's go ahead and actually play this video of this event so that you guys can get an understanding of how crazy these uh, protesters are. Take a look. I'm not a girl, what? Are you, are you the one you who sent the trap house please, email? Please, please, no, please. no, I didn't send a trap house email. He did. He sent the trap house email. And I corrected him. Can I ask you all, as you know, Yale has a policy of. Freedom of speech. This is what it would be. Will those trans kids grow up? This is I look forward to hearing this when we get to question and answer. Free speech is what you're allowed to speech. talk here. And no, we're you're disrupting the free speech. We're not disrupting. You're disrupting us. You're disrupting us. You're disrupting us. You're disrupting us. I remind you, Yale is committed to protecting freedom of expression. This is the 
All right, guys, I want you to understand what's going on there. Basically, those students are saying it is our free speech rights to protest your free speech and to keep you from speaking. When the Yale law professor is like, no, 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 no. Y'all need to grow up, <laughs> okay? Some of y'all uh, cojones needs to drop out of your stomach, particularly some of the male protesters, okay? Drop that out of your stomach. Um, Yale's free speech policy is that people have the right to be heard and listened to. And that is something I've argued on here a lot. Uh, in response to the left saying that we're not trying to stifle free speech. You can be, you can say whatever you want to say in your own home, right? When nobody's listening, right? That, that's what they say. But I'm like, no, 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 that, that's not how this works. <laughs> free speech includes the right to be heard because the point of speech is to be heard, okay? that That's what it includes. When you're not allowing people to be heard, then you are stifling free speech. And these people think that they have a right to stop people from being heard when you don't have a right to stop people from being heard okay so with that being said this event got a little bit more dramatic as these um <laughs> protesters here didn't like being told to grow up from this uh professor right who was exactly right in regards to telling them to grow up so they decided to exit the event right and one of them yell f you fed sock on his way out but congregated in the hall just outside they began to stomp shout clap sing and pound the walls making it difficult to hear the panel chants of protect trans kids and shame shame reverberated throughout the law school the den was so loud that it disrupted nearby classes exams and faculty minis according to students and a professor who spoke on the condition of anonymity so i want y'all to understand because the professor said look we not having this, okay? Y'all woke people need to leave, okay? They say, you know what? Fine, we'll leave, but we'll go outside of the uh, lecture hall that you're having this uh, conversation in, and we're gonna make so much noise that you will not be able to hear each other, right? You will not be able to have a conversation. And they don't give a damn if that disrupts all the other students who have nothing to do with that because at the end of the day, they see uh, what is happening as so hateful they're so offended they're so triggered that they simply will not allow those people to speak right just to simply have a conversation and there's a bipartisan discussion and this is how far gone these people are these are people that are supposed to be future leaders in our society guys it's, this is scary stuff ellen cosgrove the associate dean of the law school was present at the panel the entire time though the cacophony uh, clearly violated uh, Yale's free speech policy. She did not confront any of the protesters. And see, that's the damn problem. That is the problem, okay? Uh, you have the associate dean of the law school sitting there, an administrator, watching them violate Yale's free speech rules, okay? And she didn't get up and say, I will suspend each and every last one of you if you continue to disrupt this event. You will be out. You will be expelled, from this school if you continue to do that. That's the problem. She's the one to blame because she has the power to stop all this if she stands up for the right thing and tell these students that, hey, we will kick you out. You, you don't have to be here, okay? If you're not gonna allow people to be heard and to speak and to have uh, discussions, then you gotta go. You gotta go. But again, these administrators, they're weak. They allow this stuff and they're just as culpable as these students. They're just as responsible. At times, things seemed in danger of getting physical. The protesters were blocking the only exit from the event, and two members of the Federalist Society said they were grabbed and jostled as they attempted to leave. Quote, it was disturbing to witness law students whipped into a mindless frenzy, uh, Wagner uh, 
said, I did not feel it was safe to get out of the room without security. As the panel concluded, police officers arrived to escort Wagner and Miller out of the building. Three members of the Fellas Society say they were told that the dean of Yale yeah, Law School, Heather Gherkin, called the police. Though the law school declined to comment on who asked for extra security, the Fellas Society did not call the police. The group's president confirmed. Okay, so, um, yeah, it got so crazy that they needed police to come in and escort people out of a law school. That's how insane these people are, right? That's how insane these people are, okay? Now, it's funny because the insanity ratchets up even more as now these students that protested this are playing victim because they're saying that apparently calling the police during this event is violence it's a threat to them particularly lgbtq people they, they released this statement in response to police being called quote the danger of police violence in this country is intensified against black lgbtq people and particularly black trans people the letter read police related trauma includes but is certainly not limited to physical harm even with all the privilege afforded to us at uh yale law school the decision to allow police officers in as a response to the protest put ysl's queer student body at risk of harm <laughs> jesus christ man these people in their ideal world they literally want to shut down people's ability to speak and they don't want the police called on them for it and if you call the police on them for it then you're a bigot right you're putting black trans queer people in danger according to these people right you, you can't make this stuff up but you know what this is what you sign up for right this is what you sign up for when you get on board with the woke progressive nonsense. This is what you sign up for. This is what happens when you are not standing up against these people, right? You allow them and you embolden them to engage in this type of behavior where there is no consequences, okay? And if you try to punish them, then they're going to call you racist, right? They're going to call you racist. So where the whole LGBTQ thing comes in here is that they simply are not even against the discussion in and of itself, the topic of discussion. What they're really against is the fact that they allow somebody from the ADF uh, to come in and speak, right? And they see the ADF as a hate group, right? They see that the ADF is against, you know, LGBTQ people and whatnot. So that's why they actually protested the event. Didn't really have anything to do with freedom of speech, right? It had to do, it had everything to do with who was actually speaking on behalf of freedom of speech, Right. So they have posted campaign flyers and all types of stuff before this event to get people to come out here because they see this as an act of bigotry. Right. And that's why they're mad at the Federalist Society. They're mad at everybody involved because they're like the fact that you simply had this person on campus to speak. The fact that you even allowed them to speak is a direct attack against them. It's a direct attack against LGBTQ people. This is what these people think. Right. So, again, there's a whole lot of more stuff going on here and quotes and stuff that I can read, but it would make the video too long. I just want you guys to understand the gist of what's going on here. Um, but, yeah, like I've been saying throughout this video, it, it is a damn shame that uh, some of the brightest minds in this country, allegedly. Right. Th this is who they are. They simply don't believe in free speech. They think that their free speech is the right to stifle and to stop other people's free speech. And that's just simply not how it works. OK, and I, I don't understand how we got to a society where you have so many people, so many of our young people that are so damn soft, that are so damn fragile, that simply can't even stomach a bipartisan discussion on free speech. OK, just because there is a group there that you don't like. Right. And they're speaking. It, it doesn't make sense. It makes no sense at all. These people are lunatics. But again, the problem is that. They have been emboldened because these administrators are also woke as well, too. They might not be that woke, but they've allowed the wokeness to uh, control uh, the institution, right? They've allowed the prisoners to run the asylum. That is what's happening in Yale Law School. They run the, the, the law school. They dictate who can come in and speak and who can't. I guarantee you none of those protesters will be punished. None of them will face punishment for it. So next time there's an event, they will do it again and they will keep doing it. They will keep doing it because they're not being punished. And at some point, people have to take a step back and stop caring about being labeled as a bigot, racist, homophobic, transphobic, whatever. Stop caring about that stuff. It, it, it doesn't mean anything, right? Stop caring and say, you know what? We're going to do the right thing. You guys that protest free speech, you will be suspended, okay? 
And there needs to be a zero tolerance policy on that. Zero tolerance. Because in a society that we have now where censorship has become so rampant, we need a zero tolerance policy towards those people that are trying to stifle free speech. That's what we need. Those people, they, they have to be uh, shunned, okay? People that don't allow people to simply speak their minds and be heard. That's how you fight back against this stuff. But again, I, I wouldn't hold my breath on it. I don't think it's going to happen because a lot of people that are running these institutions, they're cowards. They're cowards. And they bend the knee to the progressive altar, right? That's what they do. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.